What's up guys, CP Monty here back with another video and AMD's B430 has come out. Did you miss it? Yeah, I did as well, that was a bit of a problem there. But today we're going to be taking a quick look around the Gigabyte B450M DS3H motherboard, which is actually a nice little guy. And I have to say, every year, every chipset that comes out, every new product that comes out, there's always that one that strikes the balance between a lot of features that you really want without a price point that blows you away. And I think Gigabyte has struck a really good balance. If not, they've checked a lot of those boxes. So take a look at this motherboard and specifically in the design department first and foremost, we are looking at a micro ATX board. So whilst it won't fill up full size massive cases, it still definitely will be enough to put in a mid range case, which will definitely help to keep prices down as ATX boards usually make you put more hardware in there and then you spend more money. This guy's actually pretty good, is little and it does get the job done. Though with that being said, connectivity is also too not effective with two PCI Express 16X physical slots, one of them running at full 16X mode and the other one running running at 4x electrically, we have really all the connections you could use. Now when it comes to multi-video cards, this does support Crossfire but not SLI as Crossfire allows for dual 4x connections whereas Nvidia's SLI does require at least dual 8x connections. Speaking of our PCI Express connectivity, we also too are looking at a full size M.2 22110 connector for support for the latest NVMe drives, although with that being said, if you are running a uh, Athlon series from the 200 or 7th gen series, uh, you will keep in mind that these guys are limited to only SATA 3 uh, devices. So if you're running an Athlon, can't run NVMe, but the rest is pretty much good to go. Moving right along, we also do get ourselves the standard 4 SATA port layout, which personally, I would like to see budget boards move away from 4 SATA ports to maybe something like 6 or even 8, as more and more people do want more storage, though with that being said, as time does go on, storage gets more dense, so for me personally, as a storage enthusiast, I would have liked to have seen at least 6 ports here, but hey, 4 ports is definitely going to get you by just there. We're also too looking at 4 RAM dibs to support for up to 64 gigs of RAM at the time of recording and overall the actual aesthetic of this board is actually really nice offering a clean and simple design with a grey and also two kind of brown motherboard PCB overall it looks really not bad with the only real accent or design break being the gold gigabyte branding I actually really like the way that this comes out especially for a more budget board in fact it wasn't that long ago that motherboards that were on the budget were either the weird blue ones from gigabyte the weird brown ones from like Asus and Acer or like green, which wasn't really that great. So I'm really happy to see that looks are getting a lot better. If we take a little bit of a look closer, we see that the PCI Express slots themselves are reinforced with a little metal tab to help with any kind of bending. Though that being said, I've never had a problem myself with bending PCI Express slots. And also too, we get ourselves an array of weird things that Gigabyte likes to sprinkle on the top of their motherboards, such as this sulfur ionization protector manation thing. Apparently it protects against sulfur compounds in the air that can destroy tiny registers. Whether or not this is going to make a difference, I don't exactly know, but hey, it's a nice thing to have, I guess. Cool story, Gigabyte. I don't exactly know we're going to be worrying about that too much because this is more of a budget board, but hey, another nice thing to have. Audio is handled by the Realtek ALC887 codec and also too, in terms of networking, we're also too looking at another Realtek setup here. Actually building with this motherboard, I found it to be not too bad. Everything did slot into place. However, the lack of a right angle SATA connector did leave my cable runs a little bit not great looking. So if you are looking at building with this uh, motherboard, try and grab yourself a case that either allows for the um, SATA cables to come around and down and underneath the motherboard tray or look at a different motherboard because it's not going to look so great, especially if you have a side panel window. The 24 pin is a little bit higher than I would have liked. I guess it kind of makes sense being a MATX motherboard in some cases out there that are MATX form factor have the power supplies in weird locations now. So I guess that kind of makes sense. However, I do like a traditional setup where the 24 pin is just located in the middle of the board. Eh, not the biggest deal. And uh, also to, I guess as a side note, the uh, rear IO shield jab my finger. Not really a make it or break a deal, but um, yeah, kind of jab my finger on that. Wasn't really too great there. Anyway, moving on to the actual pluses and minuses. On the plus side with this motherboard, it delivers some really good value for what it actually has to offer with plenty of expandability, connectivity, and everything you would expect out of a budget type of motherboard without blowing you away with excessive things that you probably don't need. Connectivity is definitely on point with plenty of RAM, plenty of PCI Express connectivity, and heck, there's even RGB headers. So if you are into the RGB-ness, there's already a 
header on there for you with plenty of other things like USB headers and all that kind of stuff you'd expect out of most motherboards out there. And not to mention, the actual aesthetic is not too bad. I really do like this aesthetic. Keeps things simple, keeps things classy for a very budget price point. Though that being said, on the downside, the SATA ports aren't right angle and we've touched on this already, but it just would have been nice to have right angle SATA connectors as most cases do have uh, SATA cutouts in the motherboard tray to go ahead and run that. Not the biggest uh, end of the world, although there's this weird gap between three of them, so I don't know how that's working. Uh, also to another thing that I wasn't exactly sort of a too big fan on was unfortunately there's only one BIOS chip. Sure, we're not really getting that many BIOS chips on many other motherboards, but it wasn't that long ago when Gigabyte was putting dual BIOSes on everything, so uh, it's not the biggest deal breaker, but would have been nice to see too in case you do happen to brick one. And also too, there's only two fan headers on this guy. I would have really liked to see at least three, maybe even four, as a lot of people these days are going for an exhaust fan, one if not two on the actual CPU cooler, and then a front intake, which means you're having at least four. Sure, again, this is a motherboard that's on a budget, but hey, it would have been nice to see at least three, if not four, and that would have saved us from having to buy either an adapter or a splitter or something along those lines. All in all though, the B450M DS3H is actually a rock solid little board for budget builders who are looking for a new APU from AMD Zen lineup, or if you're looking at building a new Zen system, and don't really want to go for the new X470 family. The fact that this guy is based on the new 400 series chipset also means it's compatible with just about every AMD APU and also to Zen chip that is based on the Zen architecture, so big thumbs up, everything works out of the box. And all in all, it offers all the connectivity that you would expect from a budget board and even some things that may not necessarily be considered budget from just a few years ago, like NVMe support, plenty of RAM support, PCI Express for multiple video cards. You're really set up and ready to go with this guy and the looks aren't too bad. Honestly though, the only real complaints that I do have with this guy are kind of on the surface and more to do with visuals. If you're throwing this guy in a case with a side panel window, I'd have no problems with that and it's actually not a bad little board. But do let me know down in that comment section, what do you think of the new APU series lineup from AMD? Do you think it's not exactly received the hype that it should have gotten? I'd kind of forgotten that even been released, but I think they're kind of interesting. But do let me know what you think of them down in that comment section. Also do while you're down there, check the description box if you want to pick up this motherboard. Thanks guys for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one.